Hello, this is Pastor Mike Mutchler. We are celebrating our 35th anniversary at Grandview Baptist Church. It's been an exciting journey. About two summers ago, we had a guest, uh, Dr. Shoemaker from Pensacola Christian College. And while he was here, I drove him around, my wife and his wife, and we drove around and I started pointing to different buildings, said we met here, we met there, we had Sunday school here, we had Sunday school there. And as I showed him around, he said, Pastor, have you ever videotaped that? And I said, no, who would be interested? He said, you'd be surprised. He said, you need to videotape that for history's sake. Well, last year on our 34th anniversary, I did that. This year, we're showing you one more time some of the history of Grandview Baptist Church. It was September 9th, 1984, we had our first service. 75 people showed up, three people gave their life to Christ, and we were on our way. It's been a wonderful journey. God has blessed us far beyond our wildest imagination and certainly far, far better than we would ever deserve. As we look at this, I hope that those of you who are new to our church would be able to sense that right from the start, God's hand of blessings have been upon our ministry. I'm glad to say I believe it still is, and we're still excited for the future. I hope you'll enjoy this video. Behind us is the Carpenters Union Hall. That's where it all started, September 9th, 1984. It certainly was an exciting day. I know we set up chairs. We were praying for 75 people to show up. We didn't have a clue. We'd been praying for months. Guess what? 75 people showed up that Sunday morning. Three of them trusted Christ as their Savior. We have some wonderful memories in this building right here. The adults and nurseries always met here, but children met in different places and teenagers as we continue to grow, and we hope to share some of that with you. My wife, of course, was the big part of Grandview. So tell us some about your remembrances of the Carpenters Hall. Well, the one thing I was thinking about the first day was we were setting everything up and our son, Ryan, was uh, six years old and he came running, he goes, Mom, Mom, people are coming, they're actually coming. And so he was so excited that, because he had helped knock on doors and do things as a, as a little child could do. But there were some great memories of, and funny things that happened, meeting in a Carpenters Union Hall. Um, there were things that were there that we didn't want our kids around, but, uh, you know, we had to hide the beer and the cigarettes most of the time, but it was great. And we sat up, took down, and I remember having uh, Sunday school and the drive through over here at the bank and out in the parking lot and a big tent set over at the corner one Sunday for uh, God's Army Sunday for the children. Just loads of memories here. And uh, it, was, it was great and it's rewarding and it's fun looking back. You know, I just want to mention too, in those early days, of course, the Carpenters Hall was open to other people. We just had it on Sunday initially. And a lot of times there'd be a party in there on Saturday and there'd be a big old stain where they spilt beer all over the place. And you'd come in on Sunday morning, have to open the doors because everything smelled like beer. And I told Vicki, I said, at least we'll get back all the new converts. <laughs> and it was funny. We just made fun of the situation because that's all we could do. But God blessed and, and we became a church here in the Carpenters Hall starting September 9th, 1984. Right behind us, we have Living Hope Church. Back in the day, this was called Liberty Baptist Church. When we started Grandview Baptist Church, the first thing we needed was a church we could use for baptisms. And so we used this church, Liberty Baptist. Later, it became known as Living Hope Church. Three Baptist churches merged together to form this one. But we used this for about three or four months and baptized about 50 to 60 people in their baptistry. 
In fact, they let us use it until their water bill started getting a little higher for them. So from there, we went to the old downtown First Baptist Church, and we used that for about three years, and they were tickled to death to let us use it. So we had good memories here and pictures of pe people getting baptized here at Living Hope Church. We're here on the property of Danielson's Thriftway, at least that's what it used to be 30 years ago. I met with Craig Danielson and he was able to give us a spot to meet. Back over here on my left, we have Bogo Tanning. There used to be a Saucy's Pizza there that went out of business and he let us use that free for our teenagers. So they would be here in Sunday school and then they'd walk over about a block to the Carpenter's Hall for the Sunday morning service. We used that for several years. Then later, uh, he had someone to rent that. So he put us on the other side of this building and we'll show that in just a minute. But we had the teenagers meet there and also we started using that for soul winning because we met at our house for several years for our midweek service, for soul winning on Thursday, soul winning on Friday, soul winning on Saturday. Over a hundred different people came to our home every single week, and Miss Vicki uh, still kept her wit. And so we had a wonderful time serving the Lord. And it, this was a great place to meet for our teenagers. Behind me is the First Baptist Church of Oregon City. This is the oldest Baptist church in town. It's an American Baptist church, which quite frankly is a very liberal church. But you know, they were very gracious to let us use their baptistry. And we used their baptistry for about two or three years, maybe even longer, and baptized many people. In fact, their members would stay behind church to watch baptisms because they did not get to see any. And so God blessed us there in a very special way in using the facilities of the First Baptist Church in downtown Oregon City. We are still in the parking lot of what used to be Danielson Thriftway. Craig Danielson owns this way and all these businesses are. He let us use the building on the other side called Sauc Saucy's Pizza, it went out of business. And then after several years, somebody rented that, so he gave us the very spot of which the Marshall Arts Building is right now. And so in this area, about the same size, on the other side is where we started, and now on this side we met, our teenagers met there, we had outreach there, and many different special sessions of Bible study, preaching time, we had in this building right here. It was an exciting time. You know, after we started Grandview Baptist Church, God started blessing, people started coming, a lot of young families with children. And then we started a bus ministry. Then we really needed a place to put more children. We didn't have room in the Carpenter's Hall. So what we did is we came over here to South Ridge Shopping Center where Bymart and, and uh, all these stores are. And we were able to rent five of these spaces right here. In fact, from the tattoo parlor to the beauty shop and then the building over here, over here is a breezeway and on the other side there were two more large rooms that we rented. All of them were nice size. When I asked about it, they wanted $800 a piece per month. And I said, well, they haven't been used for four years. We're just using them for a few hours on Sunday. Would you take a hundred? And after a few weeks of thinking about it, they decided to take a hundred. And so for $500, we got these five large rooms that we used every single Sunday for our children's church and children's Sunday school space. So we'd have a bus bring them here. And then after the service, a bus would go back to the Carpenter's Hall where all the drive-in kids would get off. It was exciting times. And uh, we're so thrilled that God kept giving us room to grow. Well, we're right here off of Malala Avenue. It's a little busy, you can hear. But right behind me, there's an office building. The top floor is a dental office. We rented the whole top floor, 11 different rooms for Sunday school, and we used this place for about a year. And that's one of the first places we came to with our children outside of the Carpenter's Hall. 
Right behind me is the original Oregon City Hospital. Now it's called the Oregon City Residential Care. Over here in the basement is where we started Grandview Christian Academy with 12 students. Later that year, we ended with 20. It was a start. It was cold, it was dark, it smelled, it was near the uh, cook, the kitchen, and it was a, a frightful place to be, but that's where we started Grandview Christian Academy. And we got it for free because the owner of this daughter came to our church. And so God blessed in that way. Behind me is the Sims Plaza. It was owned by the mayor of Oregon City at the time, probably about 32 years ago. And we rented the bottom basement, which we called the Lion Tamers. It was just a rough basement, but we came in with sheetrock and doors and made it a beautiful meeting place. Lion Tamers was our first addiction-based program reaching people who had problems with addiction. On the first floor is where our Christian school met for a year. And so it started the second and third year in this place right here on the first floor. And so we filled up that seven rooms on the first floor, plus the bottom we used once or twice a week for lion tamers. And so God used that, the Sims Plaza. The mayor gave us a pretty fair price. He would come to church every once in a while. And it was amazing all the connections we had just being a church a few years old. Behind us is what used to be called Barclay School. When it closed up, we came and were able to rent it on Sunday mornings. Today it's a community hall. But there were 15 classrooms that we used for Sunday school for at least four years. And so every Sunday we would bring four buses here park right in front of the school and then they would go in have Sunday school and children's church get back on the buses anyone coming to church would go back to the carpenters hall all the drive-in parents would pick up their kids and then the buses would take the rest of the children that came on bus routes home and we did that every single Sunday for four years it was a wonderful place to meet it has a large auditorium 15 large classrooms on the other side of this building, there's a play area with play equipment, and we would use that for children's church as well, plus a big field that we use for Easter egg hunts every Easter for four years. It was a wonderful place to meet. We thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, here we are again at Barclay School, or at least that's what it was called when we rented it many years ago. We were here for four years, right? Over here, you get to see a, the end of the auditorium. Now that auditorium could seat about 150 to 200 people, so it was just ideal for assemblies and children's church. It had a nice stage on it. And then as you can see over here, we have two-story educational. We use 15 of those rooms for Sunday school and children's church. It was a wonderful thing. We loved this place. Our buses would park on the street, and then about 120 to sometimes 200 children would get off here. It was wonderful days. Now over here, you can see the field. And this is a field that we used for uh, Easter egg hunts and fun times. There was a playground and this field, we'd hide eggs all over there. We used it for four years. It worked wonderful. And the kids had a wonderful time. Everyone who came to Sunday School and Children's Church at Barclay School had wonderful memories, and we had an excellent team of teachers teaching all of those classes. In the seventh year of Grandview Baptist Church, we found a piece of property on the corner of Highway 213 and South Leland Road. It was for sale. We found it was for sale for $129,999. At first, I thought it's too far out of town, but at that price, 12,000 an acre, we jumped at it. I pulled over my car, pulled open the barbed wire fence right along here, crawled through, and walked around this property while there were three or four horses still here. Many times, our men 
would come on the property, our teenagers, and we'd walk around the property, being careful where we step, and we would pray that God would give us this property. We made an offer on it. We put $2,000 down, and we told them in four months, we would give them $38,000 for a $40,000 down payment. We asked them to carry the note, and they agreed to it. And then two years later, we started building on this piece of property. It was exciting times for our church, and I want you to realize this was a horse pasture that's now being used for the glory of God. This is the first building that was built on this pasture. We built this building starting in 1994, and we finished it in seven months. We built it ourselves. We could afford a loan on the building materials, but not to have someone else do it. So the men and women of our church, even teenagers, helped build this building from the ground up. God was very gracious to us because we had very little knowledge, but a lot of volunteer help. Now the parking lot was gravel for another two or three years. It was terrible to work with. It was dusty in the summertime, but all we could afford was just to get into the very first building. But you know, God blessed us in this first building and we grew by over a hundred people driving in to come to our church that very first year. It was truly a miracle blessing from God. After we'd been in our very first building for two years, we realized we were out of room. In fact, on the Easter, before in that second year, we had a thousand and five people in that very first building. Talk about crowded. We were packed in like sardines. But we didn't have the money, but we knew we had to take another step of faith. And so we built the educational building. It took us a while to get the plans, and it took us a while to build it, but it gave us another 6,000 square feet, and God has used that, and we filled it up in the first year or two of it being built. When we were 22 years of age, we started a Korean ministry. Brother Choi came from Korea with his family and they started reaching Koreans throughout the Portland metropolitan area. At the same time, we had a Spanish church that were conflicting for area. So we added on to our educational building 6,000 square feet. And that gave us an auditorium that would seat 200 with a cafeteria underneath where 110 people could eat. And we were constantly looking for more and more room. Now, our Spanish church is a separate church. The Korean church became a separate church. And now the English church uses it every single Sunday morning. After we grew so much in the very first building and then the added educational building, 
we needed more room for nursery. And so we added what is called the Adler Room. Actually, we came out 15 feet and the rest of the Adler Room was added when we built our main auditorium. But that 15 by 33 spot gave us an enlarged nursery, which we desperately needed in those early days. After we met in the original auditorium, we went to two services for three and a half years. And at that time, we'd already built the educational building as well. And then we realized we need more room for an auditorium. And so it took us about a year to develop plans. It took us about a year to develop finances. And then in the year 2000, we started building our main auditorium and educational complex. Well, that took us almost a year to build. So it was in May of 2001 where we dedicated this building that stands behind us and we've been using it ever since. God blessed us with an amazing facility and we built it for $55 a square foot furnished. That's a miracle of God. We bought the property here on Henrici. We had 12 acres. Our good neighbor was Mr. Lusage. Mr. and Miss Lusage lived in the house right behind us. That's where the Vestals live. In 2005, they had passed away and this property came up for sale. It was 27 acres in all. Well, it was a tough time financially in the year of our church and we couldn't afford all 27 acres, but we did purchase the five acres which includes the house, and that's where Chris Vestal and his family lives, and then all these barns and sheds, and we have storage in there. And this five acres is where we're going to build the new uh, activity center. And so it's the future of our church. We had to buy it, and we bought it for a little under $500,000. So you're looking at the future 
buildings of Grandview Baptist Church. This is our old auditorium. It used to seat 290 people with 90 of them in the balcony, had a full stage and a baptistry we used every single Sunday for 14 years in a row. <laughs> Those were exciting days. When our Spanish church who met in here for many years moved over into the other building because the Korean church got their own building, then we thought, what will we do? Well. A great idea. Let's make it into a mini auditorium gymnasium, mini gymnasium. And so that's what we did. And our kids have loved it. It's a wonderful place to play when it's raining outside. Uh, we want a full gymnasium someday, but until then, we love this place. Behind us is our newest addition. We started building it in 2017. We finished it in 2018 in April. It's an exciting building with three large classrooms on the bottom and three large classrooms on the top. We use for adult Sunday school classes. We use all during the week for our Christian school. It also has a large storage space going over the Vestal Sunday school class that we use as well. It's a marvelous building, beautiful state of the art, and God blessed us with this facility. We are standing here in the back of our buildings at Grandview Baptist Church. You can see we have three portable buildings. About 5,400 square feet of property was added this year. It took us a few months and quite a bit of money, but it's all done and those six classes are used every single day for school and soon for Sunday school. New classes will be started there. Adults will be meeting there. It's exciting to see what's happening every year at Grandview Baptist Church.